to make you accept all the bad things that are happening, to turn you into a biological android, a type of zombie. You cannot make this up. Please send this video to everyone you know. For God's sakes, understand how serious this is. This is a global scientific corporate takeover of life itself. The globalists aren't just re-engineering corn and wheat and every other major crop and engineering sterilants into them. Suddenly, all over the news, they're promoting lithium and Prozac and other drugs in the water. Head bioethicist at Cambridge, they're the people that advise and set medical policy for doctors, are announcing they want to force drug you, and they're calling it cognitive enhancement. I've got a CBS news piece where they say that mercury helps your intelligence when everyone knows it causes brain damage. Mercury containing vaccines may help not harm kids according to two new studies in the journal. You PDF. feel sleepy and relaxed. So relaxed. You trust me and what I say. Has she given up fighting? Alex is about to get a shock from an old friend now on BBC One in Ashes to Ashes and remember it was acceptable in the 80s. Now, with some strong language on BBC One and BBC HD, the weather's a top talking point with Andrew Marr in Britain from above. Time for a look at the BBC News now on BBC One with Fiona Bruce. Okay, we're off. Hello, David. Hi. Uh, what message do we get for the journalists who work at the BBC? Well, journalists who work for the BBC, and I, I was one, um, the, 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 the message is uh, think for yourself and uh, don't take the norms in society, and this is what I would say to any journalist, don't take the norms in society as the point of reference for how you see the world and how you report the world, because that's what happens. I saw it in journalism myself. Um, people say, um, uh, so you're saying that all journalists are, are, are involved in, the, they're all manipulating. No, no. Um, what happens in, in journalism, is, mainstream journalism I'm talking about, is they take the norms in society at any point, and that's their point of reference. So anyone that is um, saying or doing things outside of those norms is, is, is of, in my case, ridiculed. Uh, because they're outside the norm. So a few centuries ago, today's journalists would have ridiculed anyone who said the earth was uh, round, because the norm was at that time that it was flat. Um, and, and so it's important for journalists to, to open their uh, minds to see that uh, the norms are not necessarily um, everything there is to know. But then you've got the next level with the BBC and uh, mainstream journalism in general, in which there are uh, limits to what you're allowed to put out. Um, you know, if you uh, reported someone like me um, in a, oh, this, this, this guy takes the points and this and all this stuff, then that's fine. You can, you can, talk, you can report me on that level. But if you said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this um, uh, report or this documentary on this guy, and actually, we're going to take seriously what he's saying. Not that we're going to believe it, but what we're going to do is we're going to go with an open mind and we're going to look at the evidence. And that's a completely different uh, uh, situation. And I doubt very much if that would be um, acceptable and certainly would not never make the air. Um, I've been interviewed a, a couple of times by uh, tabloid journalists um, who wanted to do, on the last occasion, a two-page feature um, about what I was saying about me and um, all the photographs were taken and everything. Um, but his article was uh, going to be, actually this guy's not, not 
crazy and he might be saying this but hey you know never made the, never made the paper never got in just never ever used and this guy was a, a named frontline writer for that paper never used um, so there are, there are two things running together in journalism one is the the close-mindedness of, of most journalists they're certainly not all and the other thing is even those that are um, open to seeing life um, in a more expansive way they then face the block of the structure and the worst kind of censorship is self-censorship this is how the system works um, it's like the uh, the mouse in the laboratory uh, maze um, if you're going to get a shock all the time for going down these channels then you stop going down them and you can take the shock technology away the mouse won't go down there anymore because it's been shocked too many times and with journalists if you know that um, if you cross a certain line in what you write then there's going to be you see they're going to get spiked not used or there's going to be a, a, a problem for you then eventually most journalists know the line they shouldn't cross and there's a very interesting um, uh, documentary which is available through the internet it's about I forget what it's called now but it's about Fox News and it's a documentary um, uh, talking to f former people who worked for Fox News because Murdoch station in America was the most biased station I've ever, ever seen um, and they tell this whole story of how um, there's such limits on what they can say and how they can report things that in the end you just stop putting it in uh, or offering it or doing it if it crosses that line. Self-censorship's the worst thing because then, you know, there's no confrontation, there's no debate, hey, why, why is this being censored? It just isn't done and that, that's the worst kind of censorship and journalists who succumb to that, well, they've succumbed to any uh, connection to the word journalist for me. Mm -hmm. Hi. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hi. David Icke, I've kind of been interviewed on a program at 10.15. Right. Uh, we have reviewed the, the material which has submitted to us. Say again? We've uh, reviewed the material which has submitted to, to us. Uh-huh. And uh, we've also reviewed the uh, radio regulations 1986. I don't believe it. You've got an exclusive here. <laughs> Go ahead. And uh, we just don't feel comfortable. With Why? It. Just don't feel comfortable. Why? Explain to me. No, that's it. Sorry. Thank you very much for coming. You, you have invited me onto a radio station. I turn up on time, and you stand there and say, without any substance or explanation, we're not having you on. Now... I just explained to you. No, you haven't. Why? Tell me why. I have a review the material, which you have written, and I don't feel comfortable with it on the written. Why? No, if that's it. This is what I'm talking about when I say the public are given one version of reality and people like this at AM 1040 in Vancouver prevent them having another version of reality. Which means, of course, that they're getting part of the story and not what they're really um, entitled to hear. And if you think at not exposing the fact that children are being abused in fantastic numbers, my friend, is too much for your radio station, then you tell the children who are being abused. Coming in. You know what your radio station is? Thanks for coming in. It's pathetic. Thank you very much for coming in. And you say you believe in freedom? You couldn't spell it. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. This is, this is life in the free world, ladies and gentlemen. And this is one of the architects, unknowingly, of the destruction of our freedom. Good morning. Good morning, sir. This is, this is unbelievable. No explanation, no substance, no debate, just that's it. No conspiracy, no suppression of information, ladies and gentlemen of the world. Well, you've just seen it yet again. You did say you were sick of doing radio interviews. That's not the point. Whether, I, whether I, I have to do one after the other after the other to get this information out is irrelevant to the fact that the information again and again is being suppressed. Why? They'll tell you what the government wants you to know. They'll tell you what the transnational corporations and the stock market want you to know. They won't tell you what they don't want you to know. And people like that are unknowing, frightened little men 
um, who are editing the news while claiming to be part of a media that is free. It was in reading some of the, the writings of David Icke that uh, the decision was taken, hang on a minute, why isn't this guy in the courts of Canada? Because he out and out calls two of our former prime ministers of Canada, he says they are rapists. And I'm that if he truly believes that there is a superhuman extraterrestrial power overriding everything that happens on this planet that stifles opinion and stifles free speech, then why is he still with us? Why haven't the lizard men taken him out? Thursday, the coalition has failed to convince VTV, a popular local television station, to cancel David's scheduled appearance. Finally, David has a chance to put his side of the story across to the people of Vancouver. Joining me now is David Icke and SFU psychology professor Dr. Barry Beierstein, who is also president of the BC Skeptic Society. Dr. Beierstein, whether or not Mr. Icke's theories make sense, why do you think he has a following when a lot of people would think that the ideas are completely out of this world? What research have you done on that? I'm just trying to uh, we'll just get this well, question nothing, from Dr. Nothing. Beier, and you make Dr. statements Beierstein. like that. That's nonsense. Well, I think the nonsense is in the uh, other side, but uh, that aside, your question was why do people believe it? Well, I think uh, people like to enchant themselves, uh, and this is classic mystery mongering. People want there to be grand conspiracies, and they want the world to be an even more mysterious place than it is, and they want simplistic, pat answers for why they're not happy, why, why the world isn't the wonderful place they think it should be, and that satis is more satisfactory. Professor, is, is, uh, just a minute, let me finish. That's more satisfactory psychologically than uh, the, the sort of thing that uh, that science and, and decent scholarship will say. Well, let's get Mr. Like to respond to that. Professor, that did, did you major in patronizing the people of British Columbia? Because you really ought to have done. Um, tell let's, me about... Let's not have so, hold on a second. Comments, I mean, hold on let's, a second. Let's stick, let's stick with See, the, here, the silly ideas, not the, the uh, people that believe them. Okay. Let's talk well, about, I, I, first I, of all, why sure Jewish groups are calling you anti-Semitic. Because I'm getting too close to the truth. When you get too close to the truth, they can assassinate you, or they can assassinate your character. In my case, they've um, chosen the latter. How would you respond to that, Dr. Beierstein? Don't get into these convoluted and paranoid fantasies that people are trying to shut you up. I mean, and what are you doing? You're on one of the biggest media outlets in Vancouver right now. That's hardly shutting you up. I've actually had two major interviews on radio pulled this week by the owners of the network. I've had book signings uh, cancelled because of uh, attacks on my character tangible perhaps for us to, 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 to us for us to hold on to um, is, is, the, is the claim that uh, we are we are run by uh, reptiles uh, that the royal family um, is, is, is reptilian uh, the reptile cities under under the earth um, and that uh, they include these Illuminati include uh, presidents and prime ministers mm -hmm. Bert Bacharach uh, and the, Bob the man who invented the sort. Macbeth. Yes, you have. I have a, you know, Bert Bacharach attends uh, a place called Bohemian Grove yeah. along with people. What I, I've named people that attend Bohemian Grove. Mm. And suggesting that I, they're part of the Illuminati. Right, right, I, I, have, I have named certain people as part of the Illuminati, uh -huh. but other people attend that place and we're not. Well, this is an easier one for us to sort of get a grasp on than, than you know, sort of the, 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 the cosmos as a whole. Yeah. Is, 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 the, is the belief that our royal family are shapeshifters. Well, where have I got lizards. this from? I mean, did I sit in a darkened room and think, you know, I think that's what it is. I have traveled to more than 40 countries over 14 years. I've talked to thousands of people from every walk of life you can imagine. And once you, you, you start to get a reputation for this, you become a magnet for people who know things but don't know how to get them out, so they come to you. And uh, this whole uh, idea of uh, non-human entities uh, manipulating our world by, if you like, possessing the human form of certain bloodlines um, has uh, come to me from endless sources uh, of, of people from, like I say, every different walk of life you can imagine who told me their experiences from people who've experienced seeing members of the royal family uh, in this uh, strange non-human state. I got a call from uh, a lady uh, in America who is uh, the head of an organization called Parents Against Ritual Abuse. Um, I hadn't gone public on this reptilian thing at all at the time, and I was talking to her about the scale of child uh, satanic ritual abuse in America. In the middle of this conversation, she said to me, can you help me? She said, 
there's something I don't understand. Can you explain why so many of my clients tell me that during these rituals the participants turn into reptiles? Um, and, and, and this has come to me from so many different sources. Then you go back and you look at the ancient accounts in Asia, South America, uh, Australia, uh, North America um, of um, uh, accounts of what happened to them in the ancient past. And what do you find? You find again and again this constantly recurring theme of entities moving between human and reptilian They can't be forms. happy that you're, you're, uh, that, 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 that you're sort of outing them. Um, um, why haven't they killed well, you? Well, what, what's kind of interesting is that uh, the attempts to stop me speaking in public and the attempts to uh, stop my books being published massively increased uh, once I introduced the reptilian element to it. Um, I, I have had a tremendous... Oh, there's uh, a bestseller uh, there then, eh, David? And a Let's tremendous uh, uh, in. Uh, amount of uh, effort to stop me speaking in public, not least in North America. Mm. Why, if I'm crazy, just leave me to it. Well then, you see, you take symbols like the ancient symbol of the dragon, which is all outside the city of London on the boundaries, presumably the dragon on the Welsh flag. You make a reference to the frog prince, therefore not being a fairy tale because a human has to kiss an amphibious reptile thing. Um, George and the dragon, I suppose, these are all, you think, mythical but real well, the, when, you, when you go back to the ancient world, you find um, that uh, symbolism they use for many things um, uh, turns up in the modern world. And of course, uh, to people that don't understand the symbolism, have not been initiated into the knowledge, they see the symbol and that's it. Mm. But uh, the people behind this uh, manipulation to a global Orwellian fascist state, now I've been talking about this in my books for 14 years, mm. Is anyone really still today so naive that they're not looking around them, particularly since 9-11, and seeing that we are moving daily into this Orwellian global fascist state? Well, we've reached what? the we level that, that the law is now being changed, so when you enter American airspace in a plane, you can't queue for the toilet. I mean, what else well, no, uh, in, in our lives is going to be controlled? Since 9-11, we've certainly, we certainly live in a very, very different world. But, uh, but, I, but, but what, where... So it who takes, was behind 9-11? Well, it takes, a, very, it takes a, a big old leap of faith to jump into the fact that it was actually caused by lizards. Well, you're talking on, 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 on that... On that level. When you read this book, Alice in Wonderland and the World Trade Center Disaster, one of many, many books produced since 9-11, with real research and real journalism, you see that the official story of 9-11 is taken apart. It had to be caused and orchestrated within the borders of the United States. You won't see that on Trevor McDonald tonight. You won't see that on, on ITN. But the real researchers and the real journalists who don't work for the mainstream media can take 9-11 apart. It is a lie from start to finish. So you Not one strand of the official story fits with another. So you suggest the Americans, this is you suggesting, not our thoughts, but you suggest the Americans created 9-11 to frighten us into thinking, well, in that case, we must have a war on terrorism. The American, well, yes, on, 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 in a basic theme, yes, but not Americans. The force that controls America and controls the American government. The technique of which 9-11... Which is the city here, Sorry? which is the city here in, in the UK. Well, it, it, it effectively controlled from Europe. Uh, the uh, America has been set up as a... Um, a uh, big bad Satan so everyone's looking over there that's where the power is America when the real power is actually in Europe in the secret society network where the, the center of the secret society network is but 9-11 is a classic example of a uh, mass mind manipulation technique I've been writing about for years which I call problem reaction solution mm. you want to change society in a way that you know if you operate openly um, you'll get a reaction against it. People say, we're not having this, what are, you, what are you doing? So you play this technique, dead simple. Stage one, you create a problem. You uh, make sure that someone is immediately blamed for it, so the public focus is, oh, that's the villain, so they don't open-mindedly look at who could be behind it. Stage two is you communicate the official version of that story to the public through the media, mainstream media, unquestioned. So you want the public at stage two to say, this can't go on, something must be done, what are they going to do about it? And then at stage three, you openly offer the solutions to the problems you created, which are changes in society, like we've had since 9-11, that fundamentally advance the agenda to the global fascist state. Ask me back in five years' time, 
Well, and well, you'll be asking different questions. If we hear after the Bible course. code man who said we would all be well, blown up by 2006. We'll by 2006. David, the thank code. you. It's lovely to see you. We've known each other for years. And that. thank you for coming in. And the book, the book. Tales from the Time Loop. There it and is. And Alice in Wonderland, the World Trade Centre. And we'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Wogan Now and Then. I first interviewed my next guest in 1991. Before then, he was best known as a popular BBC sports presenter, but by the time he'd appeared on Wogan, his life had taken a dramatic change. He proclaimed he was the son of the Godhead. He wore turquoise, as he believed, it brought him closer to God. Have a look at this. So evil has been in control of the planet for 12,000 years? It has been the dominating force. Evil's not the right word. It is imbalance. Um, but it has been increasingly in control. As I repeat, l survey the world, ladies and gentlemen. Is, is the force of love in control of this world, guiding this planet at this time? Of course not. The negativity, the thoughts that I'm talking about that are very destructive, are pouring out of this planet well, um, let me, let me every day. Was it, was it a great shock for you to discover this at 38? Well, I, th I think the... <laughs> I, think the word, I think the word is gobsmacked. But again, again, you know the best way of removing negativity is to laugh and be joyous. So I'm delighted that there's so much laughter in the audience tonight. But no, um, it's a... But just let, just let me, just let me say this. They're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. It's fine. I didn't mean that, I didn't mean that to be hurtful. I don't want you to misinterpret it. They're not laughing in sympathy with you. So, well, 15 years ago, he was ridiculed for his prophecies about natural disasters around the world. And now he has a controversial new view about who really is running the world. I'm delighted that he's agreed to come back. David Icke. Thank you, no problem. Nice to see you. Thank you. Now, again, when I see that, I always, I'm slightly embarrassed by it because it, I thought it was a bit... I thought I was a bit sharp with that comment. So, and at the time I said I didn't mean it to embarrass you. So, that interview at the time, it changed everything for you, didn't it? Well, it changed everything in the sense of um, I couldn't walk down any street in Britain without being laughed at by most of the people. Mm. Um, going in a pub, there was uproar. Um, a comedian only had to say my name to get a laugh. And what that does is it <laughs> reveals to you the level of immaturity that passes for adulthood um, in this country whereby clearly a guy was going through an incredible experience and instead of being mature and saying why is this guy gone from being this what you would call straight normal television presenter to how he is now this is interesting what's happening here instead and I heard the ripples of laughter 16 years on when my name was mentioned. People just laughed. But the other, which gave me a real insight, especially given what I'm doing now in my books, about how easy it is for the few to control the many. Because the many, you know, we laugh at sheep because sheep just follow the one in front. Ah, oh, stupid sheep. We humans have out -sheep the sheep because at least the sheep need a sheepdog to keep uh, them in line. Humans keep each other in line. And they do it by ridiculing or condemning anyone who commits the crime, because that's what it's become, of being different. I had a choice, Terry, at that point. I could have ended up with, faced with that scale of ridicule and ended up shaking in the corner or I could have said, as I did, laugh, condemn, I don't give a damn. This is me. And if you don't like me, well, that's, that's bad news because this is the only me there is. And I refuse to conform uh, and be bowed by the ridicule. And what, what it does, Terry, when you step out of the little box of what will other people think, how do I put this in a way that people won't think I'm crazy, you then realize how small a box you've actually been living in. But you do understand that, and I know you do, that 
you did make yourself a target because what you were saying was outlandish. It was, by, by normal standards, outlandish and outrageous. Very intense. Just have a look at this. What about eruption? When may we expect tidal waves, eruptions, earthquakes? Well, because of the nature of the way the Earth has been treated over a long period of time, a tremendous amount of energy has built up within the Earth that cannot get out. If it doesn't get out, bang. So this is going to be released in a controlled manner, as controlled as possible, through earthquakes, through volcanoes and such like. If they don't happen, this is not punishment, if they don't happen, there is no Earth. You see, you're still obviously bitter about people's rejection of your ideas. No, you absolutely not. What I am is frustrated at watching uh, Orwell's 1984 unfold in front of our eyes by the day while people focus on who shot Phil Mitchell. That, that, is, that is frustrating because my children and your children, thank you, are going to have to live indeed in the time scale, so are we because we're living in it now when the most basics of, of freedoms are being taken away. Yeah, and this is happening all over the world, and it's coordinated. Now, if people want to think that that's all happening by accident, please be my guest. I don't give a damn. But, who is, but the who's, evidence, who's the evidence is that it's not. Eh? If, it's, if it's controlled, it's not happening by accident. I, who, who is controlling people or trying to control people? Well, there is a network of families that you can take back to the ancient world, to places like Babylon, Sumer, which is now Iraq. Um, you can chart them through to Rome, where they um, were responsible for the Roman Empire and the creation of the Roman Church. God save us from religion, by the way. Um, and, and then they came up into Europe to become the European aristocracy and royal families. Then through the um, great empires of Europe, especially the British Empire, but others too, these family bloodlines and the secret society network through which they manipulate themselves into power were exported all over the world. And then when the point came where the European colonial powers appeared to give independence to these countries, that was only on the surface. What actually happened was the family bloodlines and the secret society network through which they manipulate was left out in these former colonies and they've gone on controlling um, uh, them ever since. So what, what you have um, is a hidden hand where events are manipulated like 9-11 um, which not just me but endless other researchers now around the world have taken apart the official story uh, it insults the intelligence of a ten-year-old um, and you have a hidden hand manipulating events and the whole um, goal of it is centralization of power, centralization of power to the point where humans are little more than controlled clones. Who, who is the uh, hidden hand? I mean, who, who are these hidden hands? The, this, this network of families I'm talking about. Um, you find that people that are in positions of apparent power, like prime ministers and presidents, are actually um, puppets of the real power which doesn't put itself on public display. Why would it? I mean, does anyone really think that George W. Bush is running America? Uh, eh? He probably couldn't tie his shoelaces, never mind run a country. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me let me tell you this. Um, t tell me about the, the project for the new American century. It's tell just, me about it. I know nothing about it. Exactly. Well, let me tell you then some, something that you should know about. And this is written down. In the 1990s, a organization was created in America called the Project for the New American Century. The people who created it were the people that have run the Bush administration from the moment it came to power. In the year 2000, in September, the Project for the New American Century produced a report, a document, um, calling for a series of conquests of countries, um, one of which was Iraq. He actually says in the document, was the effect of, we, mu we must use the excuse of Saddam Hussein to go into Iraq. But look, can I interrupt? No, hold a second. No, well, honestly, no, 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 no. Honestly, no. you see, this... See, but this is the thing, Terry, you see. No, but honestly... You, you, you say to me... America you, you is say an to, open society, isn't it? Oh, please! It's not an open society. <laughs> I've got some seafront property in Birmingham, Terry, you might like to buy, mate. Honestly. <laughs> please! David, please! David. Uh, and they say I'm... 
crazy and weird. <laughs> America is an open society. My well, God. I thought I thought in my innocence that that most Americans That's would know what the, was going on oh in America. Oh God! But it's all it, you know it all, and uh, oh, see, that, that, that's, that, you talked about cheap jibes. That's a cheap jibe. No, it's I'm not, not claiming it's I know it all. I'm saying that I've been to 40 countries. I've spent enormous amount of time in America talking to people who do know what's going on, uh, victims of, of what's going on, and um, and I'm passing this over over to people but now. Don't don't uh, yeah don't sure. You, but, you see how preposterous it is. What, the fact that you think America's an open society? No. Absolutely ludicrous, Terry. <laughs> I've never heard anything so stupid in your life. Thank okay. You. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. David Icke, thank you. Good luck with your mission. Pleasure. Thank you. So join me after the break, and I'll be chatting to Ulrika Johnson about life in the tabloids. You'd be mad to miss it. Round and round, swirly, swirly, you're in a swirly trance and so relaxed. I can't believe we get away with this. It's ludicrous how they can't notice the state they're in being programmed like a load of lemons. Look, some of them are actually rocking back and forth, dribbling. Good God. Hello, I'm Kate Silverton with your 90 second update. This is what police believe canoeist John Darwin looked like in the five years he was missing. They hope the photo will jog people's memories about where he was during that time. Mr Darwin's appeared in court accused of insurance fraud. Lee and Rachel Baker ran a care home in Somerset. Today they were arrested on suspicion of murdering five elderly people. The bodies of some residents at Parkfield's home in Butley were dug up for tests. British forces are set to be in Afghanistan for a few more years. Gordon Brown's promise continued UK support in the fight against the Taliban. He's been visiting troops there. Jose Mourinho doesn't want to be the next England football coach. The former Chelsea boss has ruled himself out. He did confirm he'd spoken to the FA. And this is a long-eared jaboa. It looks like a mouse-sized kangaroo. It's the first time it's been caught on film. Experts say they're in danger of extinction. Over to Bob for the weather and funnies. A murdering mob, some ugly bugs bunny. With a Valentine's card from a ghost town that's haunted. By the National Guard and America's least wanted. Coming up next, we got more global warming. The greenhouse effect on the Beatles reforming. A miracle diet for war. Water and lettuce, Los Angeles riots, more after this message. The jury with their verdict Two bags of flour, a pig and a turnip On the day of the jackass in the year of the bing bong They adjourn to the crack house for a beer and a sing song the heart of America, to the eyes and the teeth and the arsehole of everywhere, for the great of the good and the love of the nation, to the boys in the hoods with a crucifixation. Cable the network to the land of the plenty where the tables are set, but the cupboards are empty, it's sexy, it's groovy, it's big and it's clever, turn on the tune and switch off forever, turn on the tune and switch off forever. Turn on, tune in, switch off forever. Turn on, tune in, switch off forever. Turn on, tune in, switch off forever.
Have you ever heard that phrase, everyone knows that, mate? Well, why does everyone know that? Well, it's because this system is controlled by what I call repeaters. They're people in the situ situations of power and influence who just repeat what someone else tells them. A doctor is repeating what they were told at medical school and what the drug companies tell them. Uh, you've got teachers who repeat what they learned in their exams and what they learned at teacher training college and they repeat that to the next generation. And the great repeaters are what pass for journalists. This is the area outside uh, Parliament where they stand there doing their pieces to camera, telling people what's going on. Here we have the uh, crews waiting for the journalists to come across from Westminster and stand there and tell them what's happening in the world. The fact is they don't know what's happening. They know nothing. So this is what they should be saying if they were telling the truth. Now over to Westminster for the latest news from David Icke. Thank you, you. Well, I've got to be honest, mate, I haven't got a clue what's going on. I tell you what my job is, right? I, I wear a dark suit, not normally, but you know, I'm playing here. Um, and I'm come over from there and I tell you what they've told me is going on. And I deliver it as if I know what's going on and it's really true. I've got a clue if it's true. But they tell me and they wouldn't lie, would they? I mean, would Tony Blair lie about what's really happening? Would George Bush, please? I'm a journalist, trust me. And so, what we call news, you, what you get paid a lot of money for reading all to Q about, is merely propaganda that they have told me and I tell you. David Icke, BBC, ITN, CNN, CBS, Sky News, Westminster. You think I'd be on hundreds of radio stations on all these years lying? You think I'd get away with that? I've already given you all the evidence and all the proof. Why don't you just go check it out for yourself? When I get up here and tell you Anwar Al-Awlaki, I told you this five years ago, is CIA operative behind finding these mentally ill Muslims to, 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 to carry out badly coordinated attacks as a pretext to take our rights. If that wasn't true, I'd be crucified. But people send me emails saying I'm lying about AP and Fox News. I'm not lying about any of this. I'm telling the truth. And a lot of you out there that sit on the fence and quietly know this is true, media people, government people, corporate people who go along with this, you're being enslaved because of it.